first things first, we're gonna watch uh, the most suggested video by you, which is Ge Geography Now Iran. And I chose this one because it, I think it's the best way to locate ourselves, okay? To get information and to, you know, to get somewhere, to get an introduction for the country, okay? So, yeah, the very first video, it's gonna be Geography Now Iran. Okay, so thank you to all of you who sent me this video. Love you. Okay, so I'm just gonna share the screen once again. Uh, here. Is is this shirt? Yeah, okay, yeah. Okay, so just gonna put full screen for you. Shut up. Gonna... Okay, so hopefully the volume is gonna be okay. Well, okay, nice start of the video. Do not call most of uh, these people Arabs. Okay, this is a really nice start for this video because if you have seen my very first Iranian music reaction video, this is exactly what I said. So I really apologize for that. I already have apologized for that a few months ago, not years, but months ago. But once again, I'm sorry, okay? <laughs> I'm, I'm so sorry. So so yeah, this, this is a really nice start for, for this video. Oh my God. So okay, let's go. Do not call most of these people Arabs. Everybody, I'm your host, Barbie. Okay, let me break this down so you can quickly get the distinction. You've heard of Persia, right? The Persian Empire, Persian rugs, Persian cats, the Prince of Persia, which, by the way, Disney got incredibly accurate. Yes, oh. Persia is pretty much synonymous with Iran. Now, not okay. everyone in Iran is Persian, but it's a huge part of their story, which we will begin discussing now. Okay, first things first. I, I did not remember about the Persian cats. And oh my goodness, a few years ago, I lost my Persian cat, I think. Yeah, oh my goodness, look. Look how cute he was. Like, look, look, he, yeah. I miss him so much every day. Oh my goodness, he was called uh, Mushu. Okay, Mushu. Mushu, 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 Mushu. It had two meanings. First, the dragon of Mulan. Okay, the, the small dragon, the red dragon, Mushu. And then Mushu in Basque language, which is my one of my mother languages, means kiss. So, <laughs> I miss you so much. I miss you. Okay, let's let's keep going. Let's keep going. Okay, let's be frank. Iran seems to get their fair share of the news quite often in the Western media. However, I don't know if aside, Iran has a deep history and story in the Middle East that extends millennia in the past that would probably be wise to educate yourself on. First of all, Iran is located in Western Asia, bordered by seven other countries. As okay. Well as the Caspian Sea to the north, the Persian Gulf and the Gulf of Oman to the south, divided by the Strait of Hormuz, which is like one of the most important sea passages in the world. Hey! It's Arabian Gulf. And my oh. people have called it Persian Gulf, and it's been that way for centuries. Plus, Arabs have their own sea. Just let them have it. <sighs> the country is divided into 31 <laughs> provinces, with the capital Tehran located in the north central region. Okay. Now, mind, before Tehran, Iran actually had 30 previous capitals throughout their history, more than any other country in the world. Wow. Otherwise, Iran also divides the country into five non constituent unit regions for administrative purposes, each one containing six provinces, except for one region containing seven, which also includes the capital. Finally, although they are administered by Iran, the country also has a current dispute over the Abu Musa and the greater and lesser Tum Islands with the United Arab Emirates, nearby the Strait of Hormuz in the Persian Gulf. After Tehran, Interesting, the okay. Shad in the east and Isfahan in the center. And the largest airports are, of course, Tehran's two twins, Mehrabad and Iman Khomeini International, Mashhad International, and Shiraz International. Iran also takes ownership of about 30 or so islands in the Gulf and technically one island in the Caspian Sea, Ashur Ade Island, which, however, it's kind of more like a loose peninsula. Yeah. What you have to understand is that Iran takes their position and borders very seriously as they are kind of like a land bridge located right at the crossroads between the Middle East, the Caucasus, as well as the Central and South Asia. Asian regions. The most important and largest seaport would be Bandar Abbas, which also houses the Iranian Navy. Located right isn't, isn't this guy talking too fast? 
I don't know if if I have like the configuration. Like, no, it's normal. Oh my goodness! In my opinion, he's talking too fast. Okay, I'm, uh, uh, sometimes I'm just getting lost. But okay, okay, let's let's keep going. Okay. Straight up on moves. Otherwise, due to its incredible history, Iran is overflowing with landmarks and sites. Some of the top notable ones might include places like Naqsh Jahan Square, oh. Tower, Golestan ah. Palace, Persian Garden, the Armenian monastic ensembles of Iran, the Tomb of Hafez, Yazadi Tower Freedom mm. Monument, the Pigeon Tower, Yazd, the holiest place for Zoroastrians, Chogazandil Ziggurat, the Mayaman Cave Village, the Imam Reza oh. Shrine, the Haju Bridge, Argebam, the Shushtar Hydraulic System, the Tomb of Cyrus the Great, the Tomb of Daniel, too many famous mosques and shrines to list and pretty much everything in Persepolis. Iran was able okay. to get so much oh. of their own personal space partially due to the fact that they were easily well protected by natural boundaries or barricaded in. You decide. Let's explain in. <laughs> You know what's funny? The world's hottest surface temperature ever recorded was 70.7 degrees Celsius in the Loop Desert in Iran, and yet Iran is also like the best ski resort area in the Middle East. Oh. First of all, Iran's most important topographical barriers are the Zahros Mountains in the west, which also contain the largest lake, Urmia, and the mountains also feed the longest river, the Karun in the south, which flows into the Gulf, as well. <sighs> oh my goodness, too much information. Too much information, everything in, in, in just. Oh my god! Yes, okay, okay, I'm getting, getting lost. lost. I'm getting, getting lost. lost. Okay. Okay, so as I could see, it has a very high temperatures or winter, like very snowy temperature. Oh, that's interesting. That's interesting. Okay, so it has both. Oh, crazy. Okay. Was the Alborz Mountains along the north, which contained the largest mountain, Mount Damavand, which is also the tallest volcano in all of Asia, like it's still active. There's so much mining potential in these mountains as well, which makes Iran the largest producer of turquoise and zinc. Otherwise, they have two main deserts, the Kavir and Lut, located in the central plateau, and the only real flat part of Iran is in the Khuzestan region right next to Iran. Iran is right on the boundary of the Arabian and Eurasian tectonic plates, which in return oh. makes Iran the country with the most number of major earthquakes of at least 5.5 on the Richter scale annually. <laughs> Mine are bigger. Yeah, well, mine are explodier. Now, Iran is kind of like the strange anomaly that sticks out from the rest of the Middle East because it has alpine mountains with flowers and snow and water and green, especially in the north along the coast of the Caspian. I mean, sure, there okay, are... Okay, so uh, after this video, I have another one, which is uh, a forest. Okay, I saw it, like, briefly, to be honest. And I saw, oh my goodness, so many green areas. I love green areas. I love nature so much. I love forest. I love, oh my goodness. I just cannot wait to be uh, on the second video. But as I tell you, we need to locate ourselves and get a small intro about Iran. So dry arid deserts too, but overall Iran is a lot more lush. This allows them to harbor river valleys for agriculture, which makes them the number one producer of pistachios, oh. saffron, stone fruits. Oh. By the way, Iranians I love it. saffron. They put it I love pistachios and I love saffron, to be honest. I put saffron in my rice. Do you know the Spanish paella, the, the typical dish? One of the key ingredients is saffron. So I don't know if, if I buy the one from Iran, but anyways, thank you for producing saffron. I love it. It doesn't taste to anything. It just gives color to rice, but whatever in like half of everything. Speaking of which, some top foods from Iran might include things like pomegranate walnut stew, kuku, mirza kasemi, various rice dishes like jeweled rice, bakala, lubia, <gasps> shirin, various kebabs like juje, kubide, torsh, and bakhyari, desserts like rose water pudding, halva, sarshir, bami, nohochi, and falude. By the way... Okay, I have no idea. I've never heard of these uh, dishes. I have no idea what they are. So now I'm interested. <laughs> I'm very interested right now to know, to, to try them, to taste them. So maybe, I don't know, I can, I can definitely think that, do you eat with a lot of um, spices? Hmm, let me know.
but half of those dishes had saffron in them. Alcohol oh, is saffron. banned. However, people kind of smuggle it in and have their connections. Even the cops are kind of getting tired of trying to crack down, and many just look the other way and deal with other bigger things. Okay, this is it. Okay, I, I, I listened about that. Okay, so that I already knew. Interesting. Okay. Cannot live without tea and caviar. Tea. Green tea. Green tea with lemon. And caviar, I, I'm too poor to buy caviar, so... <laughs> Without tea and caviar. In fact, Iran is the largest producer of caviar in the world, oh. mostly from sturgeons fished off the coast of the Caspian. Speaking of which, Iran surprisingly has quite an array of wildlife, including gazelles, wolves, oh. falcons, oh. storks, buzzards, and of course the famous person. Oh. <laughs> Sorry, but I have to. Sorry, but I have to. My beloved Mushu. I miss him so much. He was a Persian cat. He was just so beautiful, so nice, so oh my goodness, I miss him. I miss you. I miss you. Okay, let's go back. I don't want to, but let's go back. Okay, here. Cat. Speaking of cats, Iran is home to some of the last, only few remaining surviving Persian lions. Oh! Which, by the way, the national animal, Persian leopards, and yes, even Asiatic cheetahs. Boy, aren't those like African animals? Actually, a lot of animals we affiliate with Africa have historically roamed all across the Middle East and Southern mm -hmm. Asian regions. Which Makes is why sense. We get elephants in India, rhinos in Indonesia. Unfortunately, most of them have been killed off or incredibly endangered. The more you, unfortunately, no. The biggest natural resource, though, would have to be no surprise, oil. Iran is the second largest oil producer in the Middle East after Saudi Arabia, and okay. about percent of their total reserves are located around the Persian Gulf. It's Interesting. Actually, the country should have about 125 billion barrels in reservoirs. To wow. Wow. The world's total reserves, and they pump out about four million barrels a day. That's wow. a lot. So with all the geographic isolation, but abundance of resources, you might wonder what is life like in Iran. Mm -hmm. well, I'm so glad you asked. <laughs> okay. Now, Iran is interesting because it's caught in this strange new transition period in which everything in the new generation of millennials has a tincture of subtle defiance. First of all, Iran has about 80 million people and is the second most populated country in the Middle East after Egypt and has the highest number of Shias in the world. About 62% of the country is ethnically Persian, whereas the second largest ethnic groups are the Azeris at about 16%, Kurds at about 10%, while the remainder is made up of smaller but noticeable groups like the Boers, the Baluchis, Arabs, Turkic groups, and others. They also use the Iranian rial as their currency, they use the type C. EF outlets and they drive oh like us okay now let's emphasize this one more time Persians are not Arabs that's like once again I really apologize for that I'm sorry I am so 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 sorry the worst thing you can say to them. First of all, what is it like to be a Persian? Well, you kind of have to understand that Iran evolved a lot differently from all the other countries in the Middle East. History will take way too long to explain, but the quickest way I can put it, proto Elamites, Elam, Median Empire, Persian or Achaemenid Empire, Alexander the Great, the Seleucid, oh. Parthian, and Sassanid Empires, Islam enters through the Umayyad Caliphate, the Abbasid Caliphate, Safarids and Samanids come in from the east, then some weird splitting up, Ghaznavid, Seljuk, and Khwarezmian Empires, Mongols, the Ilkhanid, Timur, Safavid and oh my gosh. empires, Rizan and Qajar dynasties, quick Pahlavi dynasty, Islamic Republic, a little drama here and there, and here we are today. Now the biggest distinction of Iran would probably I got too be much. Language. The official <laughs> language of Iran is Persian or Farsi, an Indo-European language also spoken in Afghanistan and Tajikistan, although they okay. have their own dialects, which is completely unintelligible to Arabic. The second largest distinction would be that they are the largest Shia Muslim country in the world with doctrines that run their ideologies and legislation. If you don't know the difference between Sunnis and Shias, basically Shia is believed that Muhammad's cousin and son-in-law Ali was supposed to be the rightful successor. Okay, so Bakr religion thing. Okay. If you don't know what any of that means. Let me make it even easier. Shias, this guy. Sunnis, no, this guy. Done. The interesting thing though is that Persians <laughs> still hold on to a lot of ancient Persian customs and traditions that predate Eve. I really love the way he uh, explains everything. It makes it easier. I really wish that I had a, a professor. Professor, 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 a professor like him teaching me history when I was in high school. I will have learned something and not do the very first reaction video about Iran music and 
and say uh, what I shouldn't have said. So, <laughs> once again, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Okay. So let's let's keep going. Even Islam, for example, for over three thousand years, Persians and other Persian-related people groups across the world still celebrate Nowruz or Persian New Year, usually huh? on March twenty-first. Or okay, okay. So you are not ah okay. So you haven't uh, still celebrate. The new year. Okay, so new year for you, it's on March 21st. Oh, that's interesting. For uh, I was talking the other day with a Russian girl, and she told me that uh, for Russians, I think, please don't kill me here, okay, because they are Orthodox. They celebrate New Year the 7th of January. So, oh my gosh, very different. Interesting. Oh, I love cultures. Culturas. The vernal equinox, a mostly secular holiday, however, it actually has roots and is considered holy to Zoroastrians. Zoroastrianism actually started in Iran and at one point was actually the state religion. Persians also have their own distinct art, which usually depicts human oh, it's true. and other Sunni cultures. They have their own traditions, clothing, music, opera, poetry, sports. I mean, polo was invented here and they have that ancient warrior training thing. They have handicrafts. I mean, everybody knows that Persian rugs are like yeah. something sought after in the world. But remember, not all Iranians are Persians and some of these groups have expressed separate movement desires in the past but with pretty much no actual success the second largest group the turkic azeris or azerbaijanis mostly live in the northwest along the borders of Turkey ah, okay and regions where their cousins this is so interesting azerbaijan live they are basically the same people except one group speaks farsi although exact numbers are kind of hard to estimate today there are about twice as many to three times more azeris living in iran than there are in azerbaijan then you have the kurds that live along the west as well and then you have the arabs that mostly inhabit the flat khuzestan areas by iraq you have the baluchi people People in the southwest along the border with Pakistan. Each of these people groups has their own language, culture, and history. Oh, and keep in mind, Persia is mentioned numerous times in the Bible. Iranian Jews believe that they are descended from Queen Esther, and they, as well as Christians, believe that King Cyrus was prophesied in the book of Isaiah. Speaking of which, although the vast majority of the population is Shia Muslim, there are communities of non-Muslims, mostly Christians and Jews. However, outside religions are strictly monitored and confined to only a few places of worship, as it is illegal to build churches or synagogues. <sighs> My mind is going to explode. Once again, too much information in a, I don't know, 15 minutes video. Oh my God, too much information. My mind, as I told you, it's going to explode. <laughs> okay, okay, let's, let's finish the video. Selling of literature is illegal and apostasy from a Muslim is punishable, which is funny because just like in China, Iran has one of the fastest growing underground Christian communities in the world and disputedly the most in the Middle East. So how does Iran hold all these people together? Well, in order to speed up the Persian assimilation process, other languages are banned from schools and they have a system in which cooperation is rewarded and resistance is punished by the IRGC. So it's kind of oh. like, join us and the rewards shall be bountiful. Um, I have my own thing going on, but thanks. Join us, and the rewards <laughs> shall be bountiful. Wow. Speaking of which, the government is a little confusing. You have both the okay. regular legislators, and then you have the theocratic leaders. Essentially, the Ayatollah has the most power. He is not only the leader of the country, but also the entire Shia community inside and outside of Iran. He is selected by a community of clerics called the Assembly of Experts, who also have authority to approve all of the presidential candidates during election time. From there, the president appoints people to the various ministries and offices, whereas the Ayatollah appoints the military leader and handles all other various duties. I don't want to say the Ayatollah is like the Pope of the Shia faith, but in some ways he okay. kind of is. This is kind of where the Islamic revolution comes into play and where all the modern drama with Iran kind of starts. Long story short, they took down the Shah, which they believed was a Western puppet figure, and then they instituted a more conservative Islamic Republic. This changed everything. The thing is, this was all nearly half a century ago. Today, an entirely new generation of modernized, digital, tech-savvy Iranians has entered the stage, and the country is seeing a completely new culture shift that they can't stop. About 70% of the country is under 30 years Old wow don't really even wow okay so it's it's a very young country when when talking about uh the population okay not like in Spain in Spain no in Spain 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 is a quite old country when it comes to once again to people and population it's a very old country wow Le year after year less kids are born so that's becoming an issue here.
like the rules, which means you have a lot of intrepid youths running the show now. Even the police are getting way more lenient because the police are getting younger too. Everyone in Iran is now kind of trying to find like loopholes and subtle cheats to avoid the religiously imposed laws. Although the hijab is required for all women in public, most women just loosely wear it exposing their necks and front hair almost as if it's like a fashion accessory rather than a religious article. Skateboarding, oh. punk rock, and metal culture has already penetrated the youth, even women. Although it's interesting because it's like Persian punk rock and metal. Wow. Oh my goodness. Wearing clubs and parties all the time wearing whatever they want with open bars and music. Oh, interesting. In element, Persians are actually seriously like some of the most fun people you'll ever meet. And the crazy thing is everybody knows about this. It's nothing shockingly new to the police or the government. It gives them a little bit of a headache, but after half a century, it's kind of like, mm, dude, Whatever, yeah. Yeah, you didn't really expect that, did you? Persian punk rock rebels with hijabs and skateboards, right? And that's what goes on in the inside. Now let's see how they reach out. <laughs> Now here's where things get a little tricky. Okay. In order to understand Iran's outside relations, I... okay. So I have to admit that uh, watching this video is changing a lot of uh, pre thoughts. You know, th uh, things that you thought about the country. Oh my goodness, uh, what's going on? Okay, I'm sorry. So I already had like a pre thought about this country, and watching just this video is changing a lot my mind it's like i want to travel to iran tomorrow like right now if i could okay oh my goodness uh what's what's going on okay no let's okay let's give oh uh i'm sorry okay so hello hello askan and hello adele thank you so much for joining me Okay, let's let's finish the video. It's about to finish. Okay, before this is the very first video about Iran. Okay, this is to put a little bit of the intro. Okay, Ad to myself. Again, you kind of have to look at Iran through the lens of both pre- and post-1979 revolution. First of all, Iraq is sometimes called Arab Iran, although don't say that to them, as they have the second highest population of Shias and hold two incredibly important holy Shia sites. They've mostly moved on from the war in the um. 80s, and the two have good ties, mostly. Afghanistan and Tajikistan are like their cousins that have different political views, and it's awkward when they have dinner together, but nonetheless, they still mostly get along. Russia and Venezuela are probably the best friends outside of the Middle East, as Hugo Chavez frequently visits visited Ahmadinejad and made numerous trade deals. The Iranian car company Hodro is imported and partially manufactured in Venezuela. And Russia was like a key ally in many of the war conflicts post-revolution. Surprisingly, they are also one of the few countries that have kind of decent ties to North Korea. They've pledged cooperation in education and cultural spheres in the past. The Azerbaijanis of the North, of course, love Azerbaijan, no surprise. Bahrain is like Saudi Arabia's girlfriend that they keep trying to flirt with and steal. When it comes to their best friends, though, most Iranians I talked to have said probably Syria and Turkey, although it's a little complicated, especially with all the current drama going on. Turkey and Iran have more or less always been on good terms, especially in business. They are working on a plan to enter the European petroleum industry to rival. Money, money, money. You're so funny. In a rich man's world. <laughs> Oil. Of course. Russia. Each country makes up a large population of tourists that visit each other every year. Syria, or more specifically, the Syrian government, has more or less worked alongside with Iran numerous... I have... I have to uh, say that I have... Um, well, I knew a person, okay, still. I have him on my Instagram, okay? He is... He's living here in Bilbao, and um, he's from... I think he's... No, he's from Libya. I'm, I'm, I'm getting wrong. I think he's Lebanon. No, he's from. Oh my goodness. Okay, I'm, I'm gonna check it. In the meantime, I'm just gonna explain to you that he's one of the nicest guys I've ever met. He's so nice. Okay, I'm gonna try to find. I think. Oh my goodness. Okay, one second. I, I am doing. I have a mess. One sec. Okay, so I think oh, I have no idea. He doesn't. It's not written. I think so. I think it's okay. One second, please. One small second. 
Okay, yeah, he's from Syria, okay? And um, as I was telling you, he's one of the nicest guys I've ever met. He's so polite, he's so educated. I don't know, it's true that he has traveled a lot uh, around Europe. He's a person with a lot of world, okay? So, I mean, uh, he's mixed in all the cultures, but oh my goodness, he's such a nice guy. Very nice guy. Okay, let's, oh, okay, okay, a few, like one minute, I think, left. First times in the past, and has been a key ally, not only in diplomacy, but also strategically, as they kind of give them access to the Mediterranean. In conclusion, Iran is kind of like a land that is constantly trying to figure out a way to reconcile the revolutionary ideals upon a fast-paced social media-induced generation of quiet cultural Okay, so it's in the middle of... ...dealing with outside stigma. What will Iran look like in 20 years? I don't know, but one thing we do know is that the young people will be ruling it. Stay tuned. Okay. Iraq is coming up next. Wow. Okay, so... Wow, 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 too much info here, okay, too much info uh, uh, here, okay, you are watching my face again, so, um, as I understood, long story short, uh, young people is gonna rule the country in 20 years, it's a very beautiful, very nice country, I really think, because uh, many of you wrote me on on social medias and also here on YouTube and you guys are so nice, so polite and I can definitely tell that uh, it's a very nice country and as I told you, it has changed my pre-thoughts about this country which I think it's really nice, okay? So, hmm, interesting, interesting, okay. Um... It's so, oh my goodness, Shahabd. It's so nice country, but never think to travel there. Why not? I would love to. I would really love to travel there. Askan, why not? No, why say that? What's wrong? I don't know. I would love to. I would love to. I'm not going to go now, okay? <laughs> because uh, it's not physically possible for me. But who knows? Someday. I hope. And I really pray that um that i have few years ahead okay so to to travel everywhere everywhere oh my god there are so many places that i want to go oh my goodness why not sahab why not interesting okay that's another point of view just let me know why not i really thought that it was such a beautiful 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 country 